previously on the Arius Adventures. Your guys' fight is suddenly interrupted by a forceful tug. The ground rumbles all around you and looking about you find several rings of like auroras light sweeping through the entire expanse of the desert pulling color away from stones and plants and looking down at yourselves even even from your own like forms and it's bleeding for like it it just all kind of like gets drawn from you like watercolor paints you know running from a brush and these these rings leave everything around you in a world of dull dismal colorless like a monochrome world around you and more and more waves of color blend in together like this reds green blues yellows pinks it all glows brighter and brighter until it seems to all pull your guys's vision and gaze up towards the sky off in the distance behind like where the orcs had been coming from everybody like the fighters you guys are fighting they they lower their weapons as they fall silent noticing this as well and they look just as confused as you do even fatima ramathorn paces where he's standing and everything and you see a streak of light arc across the sky and it hangs high up off in the distance over what you can only assume and Garrish you would know as the scar since you've you know did your scrying and flew on ahead there is a distant roar that breaks the silence finally followed by a crack of thunder and from within these storm clouds that are high in the sky and where this co- or all these colors have come together and drawn together you see an arc of golden lightning strike down at this like ball of energy in the sky and it ignites into a blinding flash of complete white silence persists as a gigantic wave of distorted air sweeps out in all directions and you guys are caught in the blast of it well the fallback from it so like the ex- like what you see happen doesn't hit you you are on the outside of this epicenter um but you're blown back by the wind and debris and everything and there's this deafening boom and it sends you all scattered and flying even threatening to tear apart your cart and knock ram your ears are ringing your surprise and shock in all of this turns to horror as you guys regain your sight from this blinding white flash you see the land now covered in a giant pillar of prismatic flames off in the distance again garish you know this to be in the direction of that encampment You watch as dozens of shapes flit in and out of the shifting colors from this prismatic pillar of flames. Silhouettes of blue and green and red and gold and silver all spinning and dancing with grace and a beautiful, terrible display of complete and utter devastation. After a few minutes, um, this wave of blast and flames finally seem to shrink within and die down the sky and colors all slowly returned to its vividness like the muted colors have disappeared the monochrome colors have disappeared and everything seems to have returned and you just witness something and it leaves you all with like this really dreadful sense that something bad just happened across the desert as you look around and the, the flames die and the sky is bright and clear and blue as any summer loving child could ask for. The truth and horror of what you've just witnessed has finally settled in. You see the landscape glitters and shines reflecting the setting sunlight overhead with a morbidly breathtaking beauty of glass that seems to cover parts of the ground around you. and. It seems to all get more and more centered in that that southern direction. And you've just borne witness to what you can only describe as an unspeakable.
unspeakable cataclysm. You are in sight of the scar after all your detours and monster hunting and mirror escaping and traveling and making friends. You finally arrived at the scar, but you were stopped by a small band of orcs who were from the Steel Thunder tribe who had come to stop you guys. They were led by a cousin of Feora who recognized her and you guys got into a bit of a fight. Um, your fight was interrupted when basically a magic nuke went off over oh over <laughs> in the entire Steel Thunder encampment. And uh, you guys were left looking at what appears to be nothing but like a land of like solid polished glass. And even Fatima and the, I think, like, two or three remaining orcs you hadn't killed yet were in just as much of a state of shock as you guys. And with that, we're just going to pick up right where we left off, which is you guys all standing there, staring off across the plain to uh, the encampment that now looks like glass. Many... Uh has his staff trained on the orcs, the remaining orcs. I... I won't go home. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so, uh, what do we do now, guys? I say we stop this fight and just go. Okay. Head towards the scar. Check it out. Yeah. Just fly there. I suppose. Fatima and the orcs, do they show signs of being more aggressive or... They look just as dumbfounded and shocked as you guys do. Fatima's like, what, like, their weapons aren't even raised anymore. They're just staring off to, like, where their home is. Like, for as bad as these guys are, they're still people. And they just saw their entire home just erupt in the strange lightning bright white light we, we we gotta go see if people are okay we gotta go see if Chagora's mama's okay yeah okay yeah let's let's go I scream mommy <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like getting everything ready to go Gramathorn like I'm pulling up with Gramathorn like get on bitches Feora just looks to Fatima and the rest of you, and she's just like, okay, whatever bullshit we were just doing right now doesn't matter. There, there are women and children besides fighters and my dad back there. There's their slaves that we need to see if our, like, we got to go help. How far away is this? Um, You're probably, I think I said you were like a few miles out. So, like, if you ride hard and fast, it won't take you long to get there. I, well, I can uh, change into a giant bird and fly some of us. Just whatever will get us there the fastest. There, We gotta find out what the fuck just happened. That doesn't look like anything my dad is powerful enough to do. Okay. I met a man, he taps his chest, glowing light, and then he changes into a giant eagle cast power oh. on myself. Okay, who's climbing on Manny and who's staying with the cart? I can carry two. Uh, can Garrus fly? I can uh, go on Stardust, so I'm all set. Then me and Roisin on Manny and everyone else Fear. follow? Uh, Fear are driving the cart with Edab, I guess? Yeah, I was going to say everyone else and is the on other the cart. Orcs. Yeah. Oh. And the other orcs, yeah, they'll, they'll oh. follow... Hmm? Someone, Go ahead. Should stay, someone should stay with Feora also, because I don't think that she should be alone with the other orcs. They don't seem to like her very much. <laughs> I have a well, Edab's question. There. Yeah, you do have Edab with y'all. Quick is... question, could yep. Manny summon Kel and still ha be transformed? Mm. Is this polymorph that you're casting? 
Yes. Isn't it a concentration to keep polymorph? It is. Uh, hold on. I would say that. if you if you summoned Kel first and then polymorphed, I think you'd be fine. Yeah, because fine familiar. Because isn't fine familiar doesn't require yeah, yeah. concentration. It's a ritual, so I would. Yeah. Manny would just summon Kel, and just mm -hmm. say, "Look, buddy, if uh, anything happens, poof, and let me know." He meows. Oh, that's right. He's a cat. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he and little he kitty Kel. Up, he hops up into the <laughs> wagon with Feora. Yeah, with that, uh, the four of you, right? Before before we take mm -hmm. off, Roshin Roshin's gonna look at Fat Fatima, right? Fatima. Fatima, yeah. Yeah, and she's gonna she gonna shake her finger and she goes saying, "You be nice to Miss Feora. She's really good. <laughs> Don't be mean to her. Now's not the time." Oh, she gets on the gets on giant <laughs> giant Manny Bird. <laughs> I'm assuming Manny she's bird. one of your guys' kids. A mask. I just got yelled at by a kid. Are we all did that just happen? Okay. Yeah. Cool. I wouldn't mess with a kid either. She can summon a meteor storm. I'm just saying. Well, we <laughs> just thought. You know what? Fair. <laughs> yeah. If you and, mess with uh, my girlfriend, I will murder you. <laughs> <laughs> and. uh as everybody's talking, I cast haste on Stardust, and I just bolt off. Okay. okay. I throw a harpoon at him and catch him. What's up, and he pulls what? us. <laughs> 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 Why though? Yeah. Seemed fun. <laughs> All right. I Falcorn. I, I do the Falcorn okay. like never ending story. I'm right in the middle. I'm doing the yeah. I like how you're doing this in the middle of what is apparently a travesty. You know, Cassie, yeah. it's the little things in life. My mom might just been vaporized before I met her. So I'm trying to find the, the good in life right now. Okay. He's and right now it, it is riding on a giant falcon. This is Tagoro's coping method. <laughs> yeah, how exactly. dare you? <laughs> I'm not just how dare you. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> so as you guys fly across the plain and approach the encampment or what's left of it, you guys see a radius of what looks to be about a five mile, if not a little bit more, radius completely turned into nothing but a solid prismatic glass surface on the edge of this canyon. Holy Foltus. At least it's pretty. Because I'm going uh, so fast on Stardust and I know mm -hmm. where the uh, slaves have been kept, can I just head mm -hmm. straight there? You do, but as you and the others following you approach, you can see like that's all appears to be just solid glass as well. At the epicenter of this area, you see what appears to be a pillar that's left behind. And it's the best way to describe it, it's like petrified lightning that looks to have struck the ground and then erupted in this cataclysmic event. And this is the only trace besides the glass that's left behind. And it just like branches out all gnarly, like like petrified tree limbs and everything that's coming out from this epicenter. As you land, are you landing near where the slave pit was that you remembered seeing? Yeah, or as close as I can. Okay, so you come to a landing, and the rest of you land as well. And uh, again, yeah? Before Manny would land, I would do like a kind of a wide circle and do like perception check just to make sure, if, see if I see anything or anybody from an eagle's view. Okay, yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. Uh, that's with advantage because I'm yep. eagle. Yep. And uh, 13 plus 4, so... Uh, 19? 17. So, 17? Rather 17? Yeah, I know math. <laughs> so within this glass expanse, 
you don't see much but it's outside but outside the perimeter of this glass expanse you see a few pockets of maybe like very small groups of orcs who were just on the edge of the blast radius like you were you know a few of these look to be like either hunting parties scouting parties you notice a couple of small like maybe a couple of um groups of like women with kids and carrying baskets and stuff like maybe these guys were gathering food and stuff like these were people who just barely made it on the perimeter of this explosion but okay they don't see, there seem to be maybe less than a hundred survivors as best as you can tell okay okay and Many if you remember if, and i was gonna say and if you remember um what feora told you guys way back in the beginning of this season the Steel Thunder tribe itself was made up of over a hundred thousand, including warriors and and their families and slaves. Oh no! Yeah. All right. Well, so seeing that man, will land. Yeah. yeah. And so then, uh, you guys land and shift back. I assume. Yeah. Once everyone's off safely. Manny will shift back and let him, like everyone, know what he saw on the perimeter. They are our survivors. Should I try to detect where our sending stone is? I, I can detect locate creature. That'll be a little bit more accurate. Well, let's just do it together. Okay. I'll do locate uh, creature. While you two are doing that, I need Roshin and Tagoro to make uh, perception checks as you guys are kind of letting them cast their magic to, to search for the stone. Got an 18. Alrighty. I got a 7. Okay. I haven't so... rolled. I haven't rolled. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. <laughs> I haven't rolled. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I... I, I uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're doing well, well tonight, buddy. Okay. I'm trying to find my word perception is, okay? I know it's somewhere. <laughs> Gills, there we go. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you uh, why do I have a plus five in perception? Okay, uh that's a nineteen. Wow. Okay. Nice. <laughs> So while well, the other two are are summoning their magic and casting it to find the stone, uh, Roshin and Tagoro, you guys are kind of left standing there looking around at this like vast expanse of glass. And you do see that it's not co a complete solid smooth surface um, besides the giant lightning petrified tree thingy that reaches up into the sky off a distance away, you see smaller things that look like were left behind around you and um, as the two of you kind of look around your surroundings to grow your boot crunches on something and when you look down you see it's a skeleton that has been left behind and is now nothing but solid obsidian glass mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe there's, maybe there's some people. Maybe this under. was here before. We don't maybe, know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's some people under the glass. Maybe they're, maybe they're okay. Maybe they're just, maybe they're just, un maybe they're just underneath it. You're, just you're right. Start, you're right. I thought my start, ass like, start hitting the ground. You're she's like, just like, just all the <laughs> <she's>, <laughs> She was not loving. She was just like stomping on the ground. <laughs> So you two are doing well. Um, yeah, they're doing that freak out. Listen, listen, there's only so much we can do to help. I'm baby. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's happening. Um, Garrus and Manny, you guys are trying to hone in on the the Stone of Far speech, right? Well, I'm doing the Stone of Far speech. Garrus is doing uh, to grow as well. Okay, uh, go ahead. So let's see, that's a... Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you. Um, Garish, your spell doesn't connect to anyone. 
Like it oh, just right. you go to to past it, but it just fizzes out. Static. Exactly. Just complete static. Manny, yours, when you go to reach out with yours, it's static as well, but there is a very faint connection to it. And it's about 30 feet to your west. Oh, I got something. I got something. Uh, As you two, as you two, as you notice that and you call out, you see both Roshin and Tagoro are like, Grabbing at the ground, freaking out, grabbing at the ground (laughs) desperately. Hey, come on, come on, guys. And you see, like, what they're freaking out about, and you see obsidian skeletons around you guys. Many, many of them. Many of them. Holy cow. What you even see, there? like, you even see, like, tent poles that have been just, like, obsidianized, basically. Uh, remains of an encampment are either completely blasted away or have been petrified in this obsidian glass. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty bad. Think of obsidian Pompeii. Oh. Obsidian Pompeii is a sick <laughs> band wanna... name. <laughs> <laughs> TM, 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 TM. I listened to it. <laughs> um, many looking concerned would would still beeline it right to the stone. Thirty feet of movement is basically all of my speed plus. Or, yeah. So you rush over there, and you find basically the shattered, broken remains of what is a pen of some sort. Like it looks broken. It looks obsidianized. You see, again, some of the same skeletal remains left there. And amongst that rubble, you find your guys, Tagoro's old stone of far speech amongst the, the things there. But it's cracked and it is completely obsidianized as well. You're just able to barely make it out because... He always used it to like carve his his blade with and everything. So you notice a few distinct marks that st- make it stand out from uh, all the other rubble here. And no sign of his mother or I mean, or ev- ju- everything ev- else is skeleton. yeah. It's hard to tell because um, of the state of things. Now. With low crate creature, mm-hmm. if uh, I'm not saying that she is, but if she was obsidianized, would a uh, locate creature still like hone in on like the skeleton? Not necessarily. It usually that would work for a living creature. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Interesting. I mean, maybe I could try to locate her skeleton. Wait, so did did locate creature not work? No. Yeah, it didn't work. Oh. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean she's dead. That uh, just means it's that means she's either she's either dead or she's uh, outside of a thousand feet from me. Maybe she got away. What's can. Oh, well, never mind. I didn't see it, so I can't. I can't. Never mind. <laughs> We're gonna say well, Zagora's I... outside, still beating on the glass. Yeah. <laughs> if he's sitting here listening to this, he's gonna lose it. So he's there, like, "Mommy, I'm coming." I was gonna ask what the pen thing was, but I'm not there, so I can't investigate. Roshina starts just stomping. So I'm gonna pick up all the items, and there's nothing that indicates. Tagoro's mother, like, armor, clothing. But I would know that. Jewelry. Anything like that. Can I do a perception um, check? Yeah, go ahead and do a perception check. Found a stick. Whacking ground with my stick. <laughs> We're on our way! <laughs> I got a 16. Alright. So I got a 16. 
taking like... the time to sift through the obsidian rubble and stuff, Manny, you come across what appears to be a dagger that looked like it was made out of some sort of large tooth. But again, like everything else, it is now completely black. Okay, I'll pick that up too. Does it look like a dagger I've seen before? Not that you've seen before. Hmm. But it's it's the only like clear object besides your guys' tone of far, far speech you're able to make out. I'll walk over to Tagoro. Uh, Tagoro, you're still on your hands and knees banging at the glass trying to dig at it right yes okay well manny comes up uh, and approaches you is she under here oh god uh i don't think so we're not sure i found the stone it's in really bad shape and this dagger and a pen you said a pen i'm sorry or... Oh, not like a writing pen, like an animal pen. You know, oh. like you would, you would keep people cor- keep keep people corralled in. Thought you meant like oh. a pen, pen, like a writing pen. Yeah, I thought so too. Okay. And Sorry. Then, like... Here Sorry. in the Midwest, we call it a pen. So... Pen. <laughs> so, I'm not really sure. Unfortunately, I'm not saying that. You know. You should think of the worst, but we're going to keep trying. Okay. (laughs) Do I keep digging? (laughs) Uh, Maybe you should stop digging here. Stop digging here, okay. Yeah, well. You want me to go chop down that tree? I'll chop down that tree. No. (laughs) It's... But it's made out of like glass lightning. I'm I'm lightning man. Why don't we check out that lightning bolt, the petrified lightning bolt, and we'll ask around and maybe we can get some more answers. Okay, I'll ask this person. I point at one of the skeletons. Oh my God. Okay, well, I'll let him just do that, and I'm gonna start heading towards that petrified lightning bolt. Okay. I follow because I'm sad. Okay. I don't, I don't want to be alone. Okay. What if, hear me out, mm-hmm. we hit that? Hit what? The lightning bolt. I was going to do like a detect magic and see if there's any. Okay, magic. and then we hit it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Maybe it'll reverse it. Or reverse the magic. You guys are adorable. <laughs> do do I say anything with my perception uh, check? Yeah, Garrus, as Manny uh, heads over in the direction of the petrified lightning, it looks like Roshin and Tagoro follow him. Um, your eye catches over off to the edge of the ca- of the canyon itself, where it looks like some of that petrified glass seems to continue on almost like it's making a path okay do i see like any people there or no you don't see any people you just see where the canyon drops off and it looks like the glass itself drops off in some places but in one section it looks like there is a pathway like a already made pathway that would lead down into the lava-filled canyon, and it looks like that glass follows that path. Okay. I'm gonna send Stardust to go search that. Okay. And I'm gonna go with the party to see the lightning, the petrified tree, and uh, me and Stardust can telepathically communicate with each other from a mile away, so I'm gonna Mm -hmm. tell uh, him to go check out that area down there and see if she can find uh, Tagoro's mother or anything like that. Or anything that lived, essentially. Alrighty. 
All right. So then as you, after you do that, you join the others and head towards this petrified lightning tree thingy pillar. Manny and actually any one of you guys who are arcane uh, inclined. So that would be everybody but Tagoro, I guess. Yep. Uh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, the closer you approach this pillar, the more overwhelming arcane power radiates from it. Many will have detect magic up. Can I read any type of magic this is? So like, I need you to make a con save as you cast your detect magic on it. Oh. My eyes! <laughs> Wee! <laughs> 21. Nice. 21. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you're only temporarily blinded by the <laughs> ungodly amount of arcane energies radi radiating off this thing. Like I said, it arcs all the way up into the sky and seems to hang up in there. And it is probably about 50 feet in diameter from the base and it just goes all the way up hundreds of feet up into the sky and then branches out along the way up the detect magic you're not like there's no specific school of magic there's no like evocation conjuration uh anything specific it seems like every kind of magic is there uh divine magic and more. It is beyond any of the things you have come across. Even stuff contained within the White Tower itself. This seems to hold much more than any of that. And oh. even though it's petrified right now, you're able to, to sense that it is still very underneath that petrified glass. It is still rippling with energy. Can I make, like, a history or, like, a religion check on this? You sure can, pal. Uh, this is extremely dangerous. 26? We might need someone bigger here for this. Bigger? Yeah, like, one of the council members, like uh... Crowley or someone that knows about this stuff, this might be a little bit over our heads. Well, if they're taller than Miss Fiora, they must be real big. That's true. How much taller do people get? I mean... I mean, everybody's tall for me. <laughs> 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 so, uh... Garrus, doing your history check, I mean... Well, you, it you was know, a religion you, check. A religion check. Um... I mean, you rolled really high. However, there's still nothing in what you learned. Like, Foltis would have never done anything like this. This doesn't seem like anything that would be under his domain or, or his or any of the other, like, known divine gods that you can, that you've studied and everything. So I would have n no clue who did this? You have no clue who did this, but whoever did is definitely rocking some divine, like, OP powers. Just no one you've studied before. Hmm. That is very bizarre. Oh, by the way, can I make a um, perception check with Stardust? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So what do you think? Should we... Go around and try to ask some questions. Do you really think these people are going to help us around here? I mean, we have Fatima, but who knows what's I, going on? I think this is bigger than just what we came here for. I think we got to work together. I mean, a lot of people got hurt. And... And... That's bad, no matter who it was. 
We, we gotta help them. We, we gotta figure out what happened. Yeah, I'm always willing to help as long as I'm not getting attacked right away. And if they do that, then they're just stinky. How, how you holding up there, Tagoro? Oh, you know, sadness, crippling sadness. <laughs> Look, it's not over yet. You'll be okay. I we mean, don't know. Tagoro really can't do nothing because he has no magic experience. So he's really just kind of just at this point kind of at a loss to what to do. Well, let's just uh, look around and ask some questions. Try to help people out. Try to gather some people that might know what happened. Yeah, maybe someone saw something that was closer than we were. Yeah. Uh, Garrus, as this conversation is going, you're checking in with Stardust. Are you just having Stardust relate to you what, what he's seen? Yeah. Okay. So it what Stardust sees is a very narrow trail that's been carved along the side of the canyon itself. And it seems to weave and zigzag down to the base of the canyon where the lava is. And you see that that, bl that obsidian glass trail follows this path. It looks like it then plunges into the lava river. And from underneath the river itself, it looks like a tunnel has been burrowed out of this obsidian glass. Hmm. And it looks and it looks like it's leading somewhere. I'll relay that to the group. Well, that's interesting. The witch, Kiva, didn't she say something about going into the lava pit, finding something interesting there? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I mean Yeah. Well let's let's I would say let's check with the survivors and see what we can find out. Mm. Stardust, we'll keep an eye on there. I kind of feel like we should just go to the lava pit. I, I feel like maybe we can send the orcs to huddle everyone up. They're, it's their people. We're kind of on our own mission. Well, maybe the survivors saw Tagore's mother. I mean, Manny, you did make a good point to Feyora at some point. They were going to need someone to rally them if stuff went down. If you guys want to wait and regroup with Feyora and make a plan, there's always the option of leaving her to make contact with the other survivors and gather up whoever they can while you guys go investigate the pit. Or you can just go investigate the pit now. It's completely oh, up to you guys. So Feyora is do. not with us? You remember, you guys... Blue. Oh, we, we took off ahead. Yeah, oh, so you they're flew not ahead. there yet. Oh. Yeah, they're making their way with the cart. How far away are they? I could send a package to her. Extremely far. They were a couple miles out of the radius itself and were making their way on the cart with Sir Ramathorn. I could send a message. It's pretty much limitless. I could send a message telling her to gather everybody together to make sure they're all safe. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for people, or we're going to be looking down in the lava pits for a lead that we might have. Yeah. Like, time's kind of at the essence. I don't want whatever it is to get too far ahead, and then we end up losing it. As long as they don't hurt her. Kel's with her. If I feel Kel disappear, I'll know. E, e, -dabs, e dabs with her. That's true. And Ceramathorn's with her. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. So is that a plan with everybody? I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Manny will send like, a message. 
Uh, so you send the message to Feora. She replies back. So what happened? What 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 do you guys see? Uh, lots of damage. Lots of skeletons. Oh my very, god! Very very little survivors. Just round up as many people as you can. When we come back, we'll discuss future ideas and plans. Oh, just, okay. Just try your best to be as much of a leader as you can be. I know All you right. can do it. As long as you guys are careful, are you sure you won't need my help wherever you're going? Yeah, we'll be alright. Oh, I might need to take hell back at some point. Okay, I'll, I'll be fine. I got Edab and Ramathorn here. Um, and... Listen, if anything goes really bad, tell Edab to throw one of those balls straight up in the air, and hopefully that might give us a good signal. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, is Tagoro okay? He's been better. We haven't found his mother yet. Oh. But we found the stone. <laughs> we did find the stone, but uh, we're still looking and are heading into the lava pit. Careful going down there. That place always gave me the creeps whenever my dad would, would go down there. Uh. All right, so Manny turns to group. Uh, so she's down for it. Uh, she says we need to be careful. And um, yeah, I told him if anything goes bad to look for a fireball in the sky from them. So keep your eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> does Never she, know. Does she know anything about the lava pit that we should know? And uh, not really. She said she stayed out of that area and mm. it gave her the creeps when her dad went down there. So prepare oh, for the worst. That's how I always look at it. <laughs> uh, Very optimistic. So, yeah. Way to say that in front of Goro, Manny. Manny slaps Major on him. Major on him. Okay. On me? On me. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're already morphed up. You're good. True. No one can see you cry when you're morphed. <laughs> That's right. There, there. Go, go, power ranger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 damn. Oh, God. I guess so we head towards the lava pit trail. Follow the trail. Yeah. Well, I call okay. Stardust. I call Stardust to follow us. Mm hmm. Man, I really wish I was playing Bite right now. And <laughs> 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 I wouldn't Bite. have to worry about the fire. Bite just swan dives into the lava. No, Bite just bites a chunk out of the big pillar in the middle. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Fantastic. My tummy is vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> Rock taste funny. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so you guys are making your way down the, the, town. the canyon. Yep, making your way downtown. Walking, Walking fast, fast. Is homebound. Da -da 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 Everybody is dead. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Don't like the think... revisions you made? <laughs> I think we need... Uh, um, I think Roshi needs to atten attend therapy after this session. <laughs> I think Tagoro she's needed too. that for a while. I think Tagoro <laughs> She's a dead Facts. child. <laughs> Facts. This is oh what happens God. with one season with Cassie. One season with Cassie and she's going crazy already. <laughs> <laughs> I know, can you believe it's been one season? You guys have gotten into so much shit. <laughs> so, you guys begin the long trek down 
And again, like this canyon plunges down very deep, hence its name, the Scar. It is basically like a giant jagged wound in the earth itself. And the lava is almost just like an oozing glow of blood if you were to like look at this from up in the sky. But you guys are, are trekking down this path, being very careful with how you step since this path has now been made smooth as glass. Our spellcasters here within the group are... You get the sense that the lava itself also radiates a type of magic energy. Uh, the closer you descend to it, it, it's strong and ancient, but it's different than the lightning pillar. But yeah, it, it has this strange arcane energies to it. And as you reach the base of the canyon, it's not over only overwhelmingly hot from the lava river, but it's also just very, you just feel this like heavy ancient arcane presence over all of you. Even Tagoro, you feel it rippling uh, across your skin. And you see where this glass just plunges straight into the lava and leaves behind a perfectly cylindrical tunnel that totally looks safe. That looks totally safe. <laughs> uh, should I send in Kel to make sure it's super safe? You know, he's such a good little critter. Yeah, let's see how long this lasts. <laughs> All right. Come on, Kel. Right. Are you sending him in cat form? Of course. Okay. I can't change him in the 10 minutes. <laughs> Fair enough. Just uh, eat him. <laughs> <laughs> so you send Kellen and are you doing the whole like looking through his eyes hell yeah alright so Tagoro are, <laughs> are you coping enough to be on Manny duty or is somebody else needing to step in for now no I got him but I'm, I'm wrapped around him like a, a, a just wrapped around him he's like I'm like an egg with the creamy <laughs> Manny center oh, oh god, god. <laughs> He goes in stealthy. He rolled an 18 for stealth. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see how stealthy he is against lava. <laughs> right? The, the lava jumps out and attacks. <laughs> um, Kel so... slips, falls into lava. <laughs> uh, actually, Kel is perfectly protected from the lava. Uh, although, like, through the glass cylinder you're able to see like the river, you know, like if you were in water in an underground tube underwater, how you would see the water passing by you and everything up against the glass and stuff. It's basically that just with the lava instead. The lava also has like faint traces of flecks of like prismatic lights here and there speckled through. And the tunnel seems to just head straight down in the, in the opposite direction of the way the lava's flowing. So, like, the lava's flowing south, the tube seems to be heading north in the scar. And it seems to go on, and then it suddenly drops down. So, like, it's going along the same, like, latitude-wise with the river, and then it curves and drops down even under the river itself. And about how far? Uh, Probably about two miles. A two mile drop? No, no, no. Uh, oh. Two miles, then it drops. Oh, okay. And then how far does it drop down? Like, is it a straight drop or is it? It appears to be a, a slow incline. So you could easily just kind of like slide down it if you had to. And then it just disappears into what appears to be like an underground cavern of some sort. It looks like there's a underground passage coming up. So All right, let's go. I tell Kel to keep going. I'm like on the back of Tagoro piggybacking on his shoulders, blind, deaf. I'm just kind of <laughs> shouting out. I'm not shouting out, but I'm just kind of like 
telling them what Kel is seeing as we're walking behind him, following him. Just screaming into Goro's ear. <laughs> so, so you guys are entering the the cylinder, right? The the obsidian. Yes. Tunnel. Yeah, we'll slowly follow Kel, and Kel will like lead us. And if anything happens to Kel, we'll stop. Okay. Um, once you guys enter the the tunnel itself, again that like overwhelming arcane energy just kind of like beats down around on you guys, mm -hmm. and. It's not hurting you or anything. It's just like this like heaviness that you guys can just feel uh, on you. You know, it's different from when you are feeling your own aura or another person's aura nearby. This is just it again, like it seems to hold hundreds and hundreds of years of arcane energies. So as you all walk along, you begin to feel like this overwhelming pressure start pushing in around you guys as you walk. And it's almost starting to become hard to focus. Just kind of like your vision blurs a little bit. The, it's almost like you hear kind of like this static buzzing, this faint buzzing in your ear, like a hum. Manny, your connection with Kel becomes hard to focus on, and suddenly you realize you're not looking through his eyes anymore. You're back in your own mind, and you don't even remember when this happened. But as you guys continue to walk, you can hear almost faint echoes of sounds from the past, battles, the sounds of clashing. Do you hear roars from monstrous creatures and even uh if you look out of the glass you know if you look up towards the lava through the glass uh surrounding you you can see like faint shadows that seem to be moving and in these pantomime shadowy performances of of wars and stuff you see shadows wielding axes coming down on people you see what appear to be silhouettes of Nico Jin that appear to be fleeing from silhouettes of human and dwarves. You get the idea that you guys are seeing stuff from the past. You don't, and it, it, it's just, it's hard to focus on the present with all of this beating down around you. I don't like it. Uh, let's see, I need everyone to make a wisdom check. <laughs> check, check or save? Uh, Fuck oh, you. save. Save, okay. please. Okay. Wisdom save. Fuck you. Make sure to add a uh, five to that. Oh. Why? Because you're near me. Because you're ah. near me, my aura of courage. Well, that's 16. 15. 15. 29. So oh. that'll be 17. You guys are fine. Yeah. So it doesn't. Yay! yay. So <laughs> it doesn't completely leave you overwhelmed and helpless. Like it, it, you're able to kind of push that noise aside and continue forward. However, your vision continues to shift and fade to where you guys are no longer in the tunnel anymore. Following Kel, you don't even see each other anymore. Uh, the next thing you guys see, as your vision blurs for a moment and returns, you see... What the hell? You see that you guys are standing on a terrace overlooking a beautiful cherry-blossomed water garden. You see an imperial palace that is unlike anything in your guys' current time. This looks to be, it doesn't even look to be anywhere in Arius that you recognize, especially Garrus and Manny. You know the different kingdoms and landscapes and everything. This doesn't look like anywhere in Arius today. Where are we? Garrus, look, see if you can sense his mother. Sure, let me use another spell slot that I have so many of. 
Come here, we'll shotgun. cut you. <laughs> Who are you talking to, Adam? Garrus, talking about oh, spell slots. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're all magic people. <laughs> Listen. We have a certified mage with us. <laughs> Just saying. But I do locate creature. Uh, yeah, you can't even fill your magic here when you go to try and cast it again. Like, it doesn't even, it doesn't fizz. It just doesn't even come to your command. Oh, and, God. and as you do that, you hear a young voice behind you guys pleading and worried. Husband, please, there must be another way. You guys all turn and, and look behind you. And you see rushing past you guys as if not even seeing you guys there. You see a young Nikogen woman with long golden hair and the deepest set of blue eyes rushing by. She's dressed in this regaled imperial attire of white and gold and blue and a large green gemstone hanging around her neck. She has a, a tiara on her head and she rushes, rushes ahead towards a Nikogen man with also uh, like a more dark golden hair. And his eyes are bright green and everything. And he's looking seriously down at the terrace below them at, at something in the yard. As she makes her way past you guys and joins them, joins him. What the hell? Is this like the past? Like, is this like old areas? I have no idea, Manny. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, you guys, you can make another history check if you'd like, Manny or Garrus. Can I make a, a, a religion or is it just history? It would be, if you're going to do anything, it would be history. Religion's not going to help you. Well, I just got a natural 20, so... Nice. Oh, oh, oh thank God, because I got nine. <laughs> oh, Manny. 25. This definitely comes to you, and it's not because of your years as a bard. It comes to you because you remember the stories your mother used to tell you at night when you were a kid of the old Nikogen Empire that once flourished across the lands. And um, actually, the empire itself was once, the, once uh, made up of the regions of the Baron and the Blood Plains and the Scar. It, and it lasted up until the Nikogen War, in which it fell to the humans and dwarves. And she told you about an event called the Tearing that devastated the Nikogen Empire and left it in ruins where humans and dwarves and the other races except the elves were able to swoop in, take over their, uh, pretty much imprison and enslave the people. And the, the land itself was left nothing more than like a dry, ruined wasteland that somehow the orcs arose from. Hence the dead plains. Exactly. So this was... This was the dead plains. Before... Is that... Wait a second. Is that girl the princess? Or the queen? Or whatever that... Naomi's she seems like to be like obsessed a... with, like Naomi's obsessed with her. What do you guys do? Uh, um, hey, you real? Yeah, you real? <laughs> oh my god! Me. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> so you guys try and and call to this empress and and the other Nico man that she joins. Draw your bows. Oh. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, was I just kind of the, I just kind of come out of the shadows a little bit, like, "Oh, you real?" <laughs> right. Uh, I was going to say, Machine's going to like slowly walk up next to them to see what they're looking at. Okay, 
So while the, the dudes call out to the, the Nico Jin, Roshin curiously uh, steps forward to look down and, and see what, what they're looking at. And uh, as you approach, you hear you, you hear the woman as you approach her, Becky, you hear her say softly to the man at her side. She takes his hand slowly and, and she looks up at him worriedly. What if this should fail? She says softly. And the man takes her hand and uh, the Nikojin takes her hand and brings it up to his lips and, and kisses it gently to reassure her and holds her hand close. It's a very tender thing. Uh, that you see, and he he looks down uh, somberly to what what, they, what he's been looking at, and he's like, "We have to try. I I can't let our people people suffer anymore at the hands of these humans and dwarves. Think of what would happen to our own children, my love." And as you join them and look down, Becky, you see rows upon rows of jade statues hundreds upon hundreds fill the entire uh, garden below well the not garden but the terrace below large horrific creatures with tusks and bulky muscles faces contorted into vicious scowls and ferocious eyes and at the front is a larger jade statue one with familiar traits to that of Feora. Hmm. Can I look do a perception check? Well, do you guys when you guys don't get any response from these these figures and you hear them talk? I didn't uh, go and say, "Hey, are you real?" I was just uh, looking <laughs> okay. around. So, if, if the rest of you guys join Roshin and, and look down as well, you you see all this. And, I mean, you don't have to roll a perception check. These look exactly like the terracotta orcs that you found in the mirror world. Only instead of terracotta, these are carved out of jade. They all oh. look exactly like the figures you saw in the mirror world. And even more so... The thing that freezes the three of you and like all four of you in place, you see that exact same font completely restored and and inlaid in the exact same manner with the exact same rivulets of gold running from the base of it out onto the terrace underneath each of the orcs. They were supposed to protect the Nikogen? What happened? God, and am I a jade person? I don't know. Not uh, like that. The, the story the... of the orcs is the dragon. The green dragon arose and that's when the orcs came. Uh, the the male the man Nikojin, you hear him speak to uh, the woman at his side. This is the last chance we have, my heart. The empress or the woman in charge, she shakes her head desperately. No, no, we must hold out for the Shah Alanis. They must come to our aid this time. If not, then then perhaps the forged souls, my. My, my soul forge, they can be activated to protect the city at least. The Nikojin man, he turns his face away from the, the warriors down on the terrace below and he gives a, a grim shake of his head. This, this is going to take a great deal of mana and I would never ask anyone else to do this. This is my responsibility. You, you must stay here and be strong for our children and our people. You need to command this army to destroy our enemies no matter what. We can't lose anymore. The woman tries to protest as he starts to make his way down to a set of stairs you guys see off to the left. And he is making his way towards that large silver font. As she desperately follows. 
Is Roshin's gonna follow? <laughs> what do you can guys? We, what do the, can we follow? Are you guys? Yeah, you guys can follow. It appears yeah. that you're seeing a bit by now. You get the idea. You're seeing a vision of the path because they're not responding or even mm -hmm. noticing the two of you. But this looks like it is a desperate moment in a time of history that has long since been forgotten. I say we keep our distance. We don't want to uh, stray too far from the path or anything. I think we're being. A, I think this might be a trick. R R Rosine is just following. <laughs> she, um, she's already gone. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of interested to see. Where yeah, going. I gotta find out if I'm made of jade or whatnot. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Tagoro's following too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Garrus just uh, lets out an audible gasp, like. <sighs> <laughs> Listen. We're All right. I guess. I guess we're blind. following. The emperor reaches the the font, and the empress she's clinging to him, begging him not to do this, and. You see he removes uh, his his outer cloak that he has on. And it's like embroidered in, in filigree and gold and greens and stuff. And he's left in just like his top, his shirt and his pants and his boots. And at his side, you see an intricate dagger at his side that he now takes. And he gives a glance to the largest of the Jade warriors the one that closely resembles Feyora the most. And underneath that one, you see that that gold vein that runs from the font to the rest of these creatures, to the rest of these Jada Orcs. The one underneath him appears to be the most intricate. And he turns away from his wife and you four can make a quick perception check in this moment as he's taking a moment to look out across this uh, vast yard of statues. Three! <laughs> Twelve. Garrus got it. Hold on! You guys are so fast. Perception? Yes. Yep. Oh, that was a one. It's a six. Oh, God. Alright, well, hopefully... Somebody notices. Uh, Garrus rolled a 21. Garrus, everybody else appears to be paying attention to, to him and the, the statues as well. However, something tugs at you to look at the Empress. And you see her standing there looking up at him with that same worried and concern that you have seen Naomi show you guys many times when you guys like plunge into danger and stuff and and just a flash of a second you see her pull out her own small gilded dagger and she plunges it into her chest as she stands over the font itself oh my Ooh. god oh my oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um, so she's filling the fountain with the blood that we've seen with in the her, world with her own blood yes oh, uh, no. she lets out a soft groan and that's when the rest of you guys and the emperor turn around and see what has just happened <gasps> so uh... the emperor lets out a gasp as he rushes over her side to catch her as blood begins to fill the font. And she looks up at him with a sad smile and everything as, as she's gasping. And she's like, I'm, I'm sorry, but my love, but you know, I've always been too meek to be the leader. It's you are the one who has to lead everybody. And my mana is, is stronger than yours to power this type of magic. And my mana's the, as the one that's been touched by the jade dragon, not yours. And as her blood begins to fill the font, you see those gold veins begin to burn and glow. And that glow spreads down to the bottom of the, the font. And then it spreads across the yard 
underneath each of those jade statues. And the emperor, he's just like gasping and and trying to bring her back and everything as she slowly dies from her wounds as this font seems to be drawing more and more of her life force from it. And overhead, you Good guys... Question. Yes, go ahead, please. Font. What's a font? Fountain. Like a fountain, yeah. Oh, a fountain. Okay. I've been yeah. sitting here thinking of font like cursive. And I'm like, how the fuck is handwriting <laughs> killing them? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck a font is. My god, Adam. Has this been common fucking knowledge since day one for people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. No, not me, but I, I got the gist. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're awesome. Hey, seriously, I've been over here like, what the fuck? How is handwriting killing her? Like, cursive, I get, but like, bro. It's the death note. Okay, yep. this makes me feel, I'm now way more interested in this. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> god damn. I thought it was like handwriting, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh my god. I've been working Fonts. so hard to write this and Fonts, you just like come found, in and fuck like it up. Fountain. <laughs> it's in the word. <laughs> Maybe you should assume that not everyone knows what font is abbreviated for. You know, that's fair because you didn't even know what a porticulus was when I first used that in our <laughs> old D&D game. Okay, so this is the episode where I divorce you live on no. podcast. <laughs> This is what happens. This is the episode. Bro. Okay. Oh, oh my god. My god. <laughs> Let's keep that for clips forever. Oh my god. god yeah, a... <laughs> Jesus. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so you guys all turn around and see that. That she stabbed herself. The blood is pouring into the font. And that it is beginning to channel and power the, what look to be the arcane inscriptions in gold underneath each of the, the statues. Overhead, you hear thunder rumble and lightning flashes and cracks across the sky as the last breath of the empress escapes her lips and she goes limp in the emperor's arms and you see he visibly looks shook like he is terrified at what he sees <gasps> and up in the sky as everything flashes and cracks overhead you guys see a large silhouette within the clouds uh, as lightning flashes and it looks to be like one of those ancient serpent dragons. Kind of think like a, a Chinese or Japanese dragon. And it's a, a dark green. Ooh. So Shinra, for, or yeah, Shinra from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Giant serpent like dragon. Get the fuck green. out of here. Adam, I'm done. Get out. You're done. Like, oh, you're oh, quite there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so as this happens, the the Emperor looks up and he sees the exact same thing you guys all see. And he visibly pales as the dragon lowers its large mod head down from the clouds and looks at the emperor holding his his fallen empress as the ritual still seems to be channeling its energy and in a booming voice the dragon speaks to the emperor you may have one wish. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, I was just thinking that, bro. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I had to. I had to. I hate you. You guys cannot let us have a serious moment. <laughs> hey, I've been saying neutral. <laughs> what folly have you performed? You have allowed my divorce. Fine soul to spell blood for this creation. 
You were already gifted the Soul Forged. That scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the the Emperor sets his wife down carefully on the ground as he stands, blood staining the front of his clothes as he looks pleadingly up into the skies and he pleads with the, the dragon. This this wasn't my doing. I only wanted to ensure that our enemies wouldn't harm my people, and she she wasn't meant to do that. I was going to... Silence, you foolish man. Who are you to create such creatures, these monstrosities that you've birthed? You have no idea what you brought forth. When he said monstrosity, I kind of went, oh. <laughs> the the Nico pleads, I only wanted to save my people. That's why I created these. You have sealed their fate, and you will watch your people fall. The thunder continues to crash and rumble as you guys begin to see the jade begin to chip away at the statues as they almost seem to start hatching from themselves. Uh, and you see the the large orc face break free of the stone around it and it's again a, a green orc with those piercing amber red eyes like Feyora's as it lets out this powerful roar and the Nikogen looks desperate, like he looks terrified, like, oh shit, what what is going on? Like I was hoping for help and holy fuck, I feel like I got in over my head. So the the Nikogen, he drops to his knees and begins pleading, Please, please save us, Vanathor. Don't let our people fall. I beg you, great green one. In time, if another divine soul is born and one of your line survives, perhaps I will show mercy to your people and free them from their fate. And with another thunderous roar and rumble, your guys' visions begin to blur and dim again, and the next thing you guys know, you're standing in a large cavern underground with the tunnel and lava river above and behind you. Uh. So we just witnessed the birth of the orcs. Specific it would appear so. Specifically the Steel Thunder tribe. So does that mean all orcs are descended from Steel Thunders? I... Well, at least this. Yeah, I think so. Huh. Wait, does that mean we're kind of related, me and Fiora? <laughs> like, if I'm somehow. <laughs> Tagara, I don't think it works like that. Are we sure? Yeah. The... Yes. Are we sure? So we're in this. Yes. Just... Large cavern, nothing around, no people, nothing. Uh, it looks like you are just now, like, you can see the obsidian tunnel behind you guys. Like, this entire time you've been walking through it while having this vision. And now you're in this large, massive, open cavern. Um, and actually, make a perception check, you guys. Boy. We fucking got all the perception checks. Oh, I know. Well, hey, you got a nat 20. Fuck off. 12. Oh. 10. No, that was for my cat, Becky, not you. Oh. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you get, Tagoro? I'm sorry, I got an 18. Okay, so Becky and Tagoro, or Tagoro and Rasheen, yeah. Uh, as you guys are looking around, this kind of, if you remember back in the mirror world, when the mirror was summoned, 
I said you saw this large tunnel mm. that looked like there was a river of lava nearby. What the hell? It looks like it's this room. So we could have just gone through and been <laughs> here. <laughs> I mean, wasn't it Garris who said he wanted to explore more? I think it was, but I, I, I didn't necessarily mean I didn't necessarily so. mean the mirror the that area. But if it was in the mirror world and we would have explored and we would have found the cave beforehand, we could have stopped this. Well you still don't know what the Or we would be or we would have been in the middle of it. Yeah, or we would have been in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's big, true. Big we so still don't know no... about behind the scenes episode to find out. Oh. Well, we still don't know what the Wait, Nekogen what? situation has to do with what just happened. I know they need a new divine heir to be born. Wonder who that could be. That's Adam, not Tagoro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like where this is going. I mean, so, because um, Naomi's a Nekogen doesn't mean <laughs> she's yeah, the one. She's the empress. She's just dependent. another Neko. Yeah. Wait, what color is her eyes? Uh, Naomi's, they're like a hazel. Oh. I was going to say, if they're uh, like a deep blue, like the one person, I'd be like, oh yeah, she's totally reincarnation. <laughs> yeah, the, the two, the emperor and the empress that you guys saw in that vision, they both had golden hair and she had bright blue like deep blue eyes and he had bright green eyes I, I, I will say I, I will yeah. say I, I, I just looked at Naomi's um, character art uh -huh. and in and, and the picture she has blue eyes they're supposed to be like a that was as close like hazel blue as I can get uh, but yeah oh, okay yeah I was just oh, like, yeah. "Oh no, I think I'm oh, dude. It's totally, it's totally her, dude. It's gonna be a big trouble, little China, all over again." I don't know what that <laughs> means, but okay. I get it. <clears throat> um, across the cavernous room, you see a large stone slab door, and flanking either side of it, you see these two lion-like statues. I guess we go there next. Okay. So these two lion statues are in this lava world? Well, in this cave that you yeah. guys are in. Underground, underneath the lava. And they're and not they moving, right? Flanking. They're not moving. They're stone. They appear to be guarding a large slab door. Can I investigate to see if I can try to open the slab door? Go ahead. Make an investigation. I'm on the case. Well, okay. Uh, it appears to be like a tomb slab door. Uh, doesn't appear to be trapped or anything, but just very heavy and thick stone. Well, I can uh, definitely open this if we want. Oh, yeah. Okay, um... I don't I, know if you, we go. It's either we go uh, back up or we uh, uh, go keep on going to see if we can find something. Would Manny know if the spell knock would open this door? Yeah. It will. Okay, I will do knock. Alrighty. <laughs> With a heavy groan as you cast the spell... The stone groans and, and begins to shift as it slowly parts open for you guys. And it leads into a perfectly carved tunnel that seems to lead into a chamber. Should I um, do Pass Without a Trace or? No, save your, save your spells, honestly. Okay. All right, we keep going forward. Hi ho, Onward. hi ho. Here we go. Off to work we go. <laughs> La, da, da, da. Uh, <laughs> all right, so as you guys enter, you come into a well-carved, what looks to be a 
a tomb. And you see a, sarc- a beautifully intricately carved sarcophagus gilded with green and gold lining and stuff and green emeralds. And in the, and this is sarcophagus is in the center of the circular room. Keeping a vigil, a vigil around the room itself, you see about 12 uh, construct creatures that actually resemble your buddy creature in form. Oh. Oh. What the fuck is this place? Something tells me that we should not open that sarcophagus, but I think we're going to have to. I mean, does the, like, obsidian trail lead there? Uh, The obsidian trail seemed to stop in the room, in the cavern out in itself. Mm. Um, And then it just ended. So either something started there or ended there. But it doesn't, but but the glass ends. Yes, Adam? Bro, I figured it out, bros. Okay. Okay, (laughs) so what if, like they took back what made them watch or uh, you know what i mean like what if like something sucked up the energy of the orcs killing them turn them back into black glass you know and return the power to where the trail ends when it's just sarcophagus maybe and i will murder mm-hmm. whatever's inside because they murdered my mommy well, we we don't necessarily know that yet, but I mean, if you want to open the sarcophagus, to grow, uh, it's it's what you want to do. I mean, it's up to you. I feel like that's a job for Magic Man. Wouldn't that be disrespectful? Very true. Well, um, I mean, it is, but it also might give us answers. What do you guys think? Open the sarcophagus? Or... Are the soul forges, like, inactive? Or are they, like, staring at us? Yeah, they appear to all be inactive. Um, You do see, like, the center of their chest holds those cores that Creature had as well. But... Unlike Creature, those centers don't appear to be glowing or anything. These all seem to be inactive at the moment. Hmm. They they just just don't want to fight them. I mean, they're just doing their job to try to protect whoever's in here. Well, why don't we just go take a look? (laughs) It won't hurt. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what if they're like you? What if they're not dead? Mm. They need your help. <laughs> Remember how much you needed our help? Yeah. No. I mean, I could give to Goro protection from good and evil. Yeah, I go. Come on, give it to me. Give me. All right, I give you protection from good at from good and evil. Yeah, I will. Yeah, mm-hmm. good luck. But or uh, or should I do intellect fortress? <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> what do you guys think? Hmm. Oh my god! Intellect Worst case control. scenario, I become evil and I try to kill you all. Oh boy! <laughs> well, well, the the intellect fortress would prevent that. It's like wisdom and. Intelligence, wisdoms, and charisma saving throws. He would have advantage, and he would have resistance against psychic damage, whereas protection from good and evil is like... That could be important. <laughs> uh, I, so. I'm just pretty sure you check I love check. how overly cautious you all are being right now. Yeah, normally we're like... Tagoro's just it's like, I go for it. Or, oh, me, I go attack. Yeah, for yeah it. you know what? You know what? Protection from good and evil is fine. Okay. Yeah, go over yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Squirrel, go ahead and make me a strength check. That I can do. Well, even with a two, that's a 13. 
You know what? Good enough. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Let me spit on my hands and try to get it. There we go. Okay, 26. Double we got last time, apparently. Well, she made it sound like I was having trouble. That's not Tagoro. <laughs> <laughs> Tagoro never has trouble. I'm not right. pushing it all the way, like, off. Like, I'm doing that, like, open so that we can see into it. Unless it's one so, of those that's going to come off no matter what. Okay, so you're just sliding it back a little bit to look in? Yeah. That's the safer of the two bets. Okay. So, with Because I also whole... just remembered I'm scared of vampires. And I'm okay. just now realizing what, what I'm doing. What? <laughs> So you open the lid and you nearly catch yourself as you see the Empress from the vision in the in the sarcophagus. Yeah, I figured. Kind of and too. she's she's adorned in like a regal dress with her hands folded across her lap as she lays there almost looking like she's asleep and she looks like pristine. So mm. yeah. Yeah. And in her hands, you see like a blue rose and then tucked in next to her, you see a small uh, jade egg that's nestled at her side as well. Is she really dead? Well, do you call one of your friends over to check or do you hey. just like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just like, hey, yo, there's maybe dead body? Uh, I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do my divine sense. Uh, she's definitely dead. Okay, she's dead as hell. Okay. But it, it looks okay. like, I mean, it, it would be easy for like Manny or Garrus to discern that somebody's cast or enchanted her casket with uh, gentle repose to keep her looking this way. Oh, okay. And you see she has uh, and resting on her her head is a beautiful crown set with blue and green stone. I don't think right. we should I don't think we should bother her anymore. Yeah. yeah. What about that egg? Y'all see that egg? There's <laughs> yeah. an egg in here. That egg is it everything. doesn't belong to us. No, it doesn't. Let's respect the dead to go row. Let's I just close it. it back up. Oh, God. Dang it. You guys knew that was going to happen. I... You guys knew. Uh, I Adam, mean, did you touch the egg? Of course I touched it, Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> I just found out I'm a jade person and there's a jade egg. It might be my son. God, <laughs> this is not how it works. That's not how it works, you idiot. Mm, Tagora doesn't know that. That's true, Tagora dumb. Okay. So this is the girl you, by not Adam. As you, right? As you touch the egg, it is hot to the touch. Ooh. I look at Manny. Ooh, it's hot. Ooh, <laughs> it's hot. Don't touch it. But what if, okay, hear me out. Hear me out. I'm what listening. Is, okay, we saw a giant dragon, right? Jade dragon, uh -huh. right? And now we Correct. have a uh, jade egg. What if this we is... Don't. She okay, does. but what if it's a jade? She Okay, she dead. I poke her eyeball. I do the dead test. Look. No! She dead. <laughs> she, dead. <laughs> she dead. Like, it's just moving. No, stop it! Frow. She dead. What if... <laughs> Okay. I so badly want to be like, and the constructs begin humming to life. Good God, I'm not. Right. I'm not. I'm just moving the eye a little bit. Like, um, oh God. Anyway, so no, we're not what this. if? But what if it hatches? Okay. And then what? If what? It hatches, and it's going to be stuck inside here with only thing for it to eat is a body. It will be able to get out. Will it? I yeah. kind of rather it eat that body than my body. Just well, saying. We, what, then we have to come back and kick this dragon's ass when we could just take it with us and raise it. 
You can't even pick that thing up. You literally said it was really hot. No, 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 no. I just said it was hot. I didn't say it was super hot. Listen, no, we're not taking this. It doesn't belong to us. We don't know where this place is. We're looking for your mom. Right. And I I just don't think this is the answer to anything that we're looking for. Yeah. I think the best thing is is to report this kind of to the Vivandi Council and see what they think. Just, this lady died trying to protect people. Mm. I bet she was a mama too. And she she doesn't deserve to be bothered. I think we should let her rest. She did well, good. Fine. Well, according to the history books it looks like she kind of caused the calamity she was just trying to protect the people she cared about she didn't make anyone bad that was a dragon didn't you see true alright alright I'll help to grow close the casket I got it. I close it. Okay. And I slide a hand. Oh my god. <laughs> Adam, just PM like... me. Adam, just PM me the results if you do. Uh, I just rolled a 19. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so uh, you guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa! D- hold on. What's my uh passive? Hold on. 13. Never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, my pass yep. is a nine, nah. <laughs> yep. He begrudgingly covers the lid. And what do you guys do? Do you leave the tomb? Wait, did I take it? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Becky. I got another Pokemon. <laughs> what the? Why me? <laughs> what? <laughs> You have Edab and Crunch, and now I have Dragon and Ramathorn. I don't. Okay. All right. Sure. I think you're the only one that cares about this, but okay. <laughs> no, you care. No, I really, I really don't. <laughs> um. So what do you yeah. guys do now? Is I there guess... a way to continue forward, or? It looks like that's all there is here. I mean, the only thing left to do is go back the way you came and regroup with Feora and try to make sense of all of this. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we do that. It seems yeah. unimportant, but at the same time, like, you guys were shown some pretty heavy stuff that none of you knew was true in today's history. Like, well, now we can confirm. Exactly. We were just there, mm-hmm. kind of. Oh, um, as sorry, I don't, I don't want to be annoying. <laughs> You're fine. Go ahead. As as people leave, is it okay if Roshin hangs back for a, a minute? Yeah. What do you want I, to I do? I would, I would probably notice that she was waiting, so I'd just wait for her. Okay. Um. Well, once once everyone's like out of the room. She's gonna go and and kind of sit down, like cross-legged, next to the casket, and like mm-hmm. just put a hand on it. Uh, I don't know if this will do anything. It probably won't, but <laughs> we could run somebody nice like you. There's lots of people. We just want to make everything better, but but I, I don't know what we're gonna do now. So. If at all, it would be nice if you could help, even, even just a little. You seem very nice, it's like my mama. And she died trying to protect all of us too. But if you could just help a little more, that would be really nice. The air is hangs in silence after that. A moment, Becky, and you don't hear anything, but you 
almost feel a gentle hand on your shoulder and you feel this warmth next to you and it is very comforting and reassuring again there are no words but in that moment of silence and that that warmth that that touches your shoulder you feel that there is someone there looking out for you and your friends thank you i'm sorry to bother you i just want to help Uh, and after, after just a minute longer, she go stand up and, and shuffle on out and give a little wave. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so with that, uh, what are you guys going to do now as a party? Head to Feora. Right. Head to the top. And hopefully, like, talk to someone. <laughs> So, as you guys trek back through the tunnel and pass under the river of lava, um, various things weigh on each of your minds. Uh, Tagoro, what is, what is the one thing that is heavy on your mind right now at this moment as you guys are trekking back under the river? Um, well, it's more than one thing. Like, my mom's okay. yeah, go ahead. really heavy, and then what is in this egg, and are they going to be mad I took it? All right, that's fair. Uh, Garrus, what is, what is running through your mind as well? Uh, to keep everybody protected and uh, help to go find his mother. Roisin? Um, I mean, just like she said, she just kind of trying to figure out how to help everybody, like the innocent members of the orc tribe and her friends and the Nekogen and just everybody hoping that that the ending of all this can be a happy one for everyone. And Manny, as you are walking ahead of the group as they're all pondering their different thoughts and everything what what's going on in your mind oh man he's just hoping that we can find Turo's mom and hoping that fear has figured out a way to get forward with information or leadership or something Right. Um, soon you guys emerge from the tunnel and you see the sun is starting to set overhead you begin the slow climb up out of the canyon and you see off in the distance uh, the cart with uh, Edab and Sir Ramathorn and it looks like they're handing out, or looks like Edab is handing out a couple of blankets to some gathered orc kids who look to be confused and dazed at, you know, what was once their home. You see a uh, little ways away, Feora is talking to Fatima and a few warriors. Uh, again, people just look confused and at a loss right now. It's a very somber moment that sets over the the scar and the, and the blood plains. You feel like you have answers, but at the same time, you don't. And there's, there's a lot to ponder tonight and to begin planning your guys' next step. And as you guys make your way over to rejoin uh, your companions and stuff, Everyone is left with their own with their own thoughts, but at least thankful you have each other and you know are, are able to work together to 
figure out the future for yourself and for the people here who are lost now. And with that, we come to the conclusion of season three. Boy. Boy. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. Thanks for joining us for Season 3 of the RES Adventures here on Party Advantage. I just want to take a moment to thank this amazing community for all the wonderful support over these past three seasons. I'd also like to take a moment to thank our awesome Patreons for all the help and your making this show even more possible. Thank you, Kyle, Chris, and Chief. If you're new to our show, come join our community over on our Discord channel and hang out with the cast and fellow fans of the show by following the link in the episode description. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter using at Party Advantage to check out fun posts and special announcements. Don't forget you can also find us at PartyAdvantagePod.com. Lastly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you stay current with all of our episodes on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll be back soon with Season 4 and the Ram Pack as they continue their journey. Will the party find an advantage on their next encounter? Only one way to find out. See you then.